um, first off, I'm seeing two very distinct uh, relationship partners, but their energies are very similar. Um, I'm seeing here an earth sign that you're dealing with, a Taurus, a Virgo, another Capricorn, and I'm so also seeing a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. I feel like um, things are very stable with the earth sign, okay? Um, I have here the card that indicates, you know, the apex of stability. So this is the Ten of Pentacles. You have property together. You have lived together. You also have a lot of trust and faith in one another. And you take care of each other in times of, uh, you know, troubles. So I feel like the relationship is on a really, really firm foundation. It's on a firm footing. The two of you are building up uh, your savings, are building up your resources, and are possibly looking at buying another property together. What I feel, though, is um, your partner is looking at you and they feel like you're a little bit too entrenched in wherever you're living right now. So it's, it's almost like you're not uh, really exploring other options that are around. And so they might want a little bit more out of life. They might be thinking about, OK, let's uh, change my geographical location. Let me get a different job. Let me branch out. Let me venture into... Um, a different location even, but I feel like they're looking at you and they, they feel like you're firmly settled where you're at. You might not be 100% satisfied and happy with where you're at, but you're, you've, you've been there and you've, you know, learned the ropes as to how to work that job. You've known the people. And so it's really hard for you to uproot yourself. So they see you as someone who's firmly planted and they want more out of life. They want a little bit more out of this relationship. And I see this um, this sense of like, um, it's a relationship that can feel very monotonous, can feel a little bit um, repetitive, okay? So I feel like your partner wants a little bit more. They want you to show them more of that playful, flirtatious side. They also want a little bit more passion, more chemistry, more spontaneity in the relationship. If you're out there single and you're meeting new people or you're trying to establish new connections and you're dating, I feel almost like you want to flirt. You want to um, show someone that you're interested in them. But I also feel this element about body image issue and it flows both ways. But I feel like your partner might also be a little bit, you know, like they want to experiment a little bit more in the bedroom, but it seems like there are issues with uh, self-image, body image. There's issues with um, um, discomfort when it comes to the way that your body, uh, your your other, the, the person you're dealing with sees their body. They might have packed on a few pounds. They might be feeling aches and pains. So there's some levels of discomfort. And so while the passion is really strong, I just feel like one person feels a little bit uncomfortable for whatever reason. And you're trying to, you know, be loving and nurturing and trying to kind of uh, ease their discomfort. And you're trying to bring more love and, 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 and passion into the relationship, but it's a little bit challenging. I also feel as well, your partner, there is um, flirtation outside the relationship. It, it's almost like they might be, you know, um, talking to co-workers. They might be um, in a new work environment and they're talking about someone a lot to you. And I feel like there is this sense of um, jealousy and also intimidation. You're not a sign that gets jealous. And I feel like, you know, you, you screen your partner out really well before you get involved with them. And so I feel like there is, um, I, I feel a partner who's being a little bit careless when they are talking so adamantly um, about somebody who is outside of the relationship. And I feel like it's making you kind of uh, roll your eyes and, and say like, are you really saying all of this to me? So they're, they're a little bit careless and I feel like they admire somebody a lot. And so they're bringing that energy into your relationship when it might not be appropriate. The fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo that you're dealing with, this is someone who's very, very beautiful, very popular, very popular. Um, they have a lot of acquaintances. They know people from all walks of life. And as a result of it, their energy might be spread very, very thin. There might be geographical distance between you and this person. They're traveling a lot. They're busy a lot. 
And so I feel there's an element here about you wondering what they're doing, wondering what they're up to, wondering where they are. And I also feel as well, you know, um, the, that they might not, you know, uh, correspond with you on an everyday basis, or they might, you know, leave you kind of like on the wayside and you might feel like, oh, it's justifiable because they're traveling a lot. They have a lot that they're um, that on their plate. But I feel like the bottom line is it seems like one person is a lot more invested in the relationship. So it could be from your end to theirs or their end to you. And I feel like either way, there needs to be a coming together between two people in the relationship sector. You and whoever you're dealing with, there needs to be a lot more communication. And I feel like they're waiting on pins and needles for you to come around okay this is like um waiting in a very uncomfortable situation thinking about worst case scenario so that's coming through your partner and i know that you're very busy trying to secure your wealth trying to take care of uh, everything that's you know immediately in front of you take care of the kids going to work on time uh working overtime even and i feel there's an element here about one person feeling a little bit left out a little bit kind of stressed because of work and then the partner is not around for them to vent to, for them to talk to, for them to feel like they're in a committed relationship. So make sure you take care of each other and make sure you reconnect, okay? Make the time to really reconnect. Uh, whatever time you can spare, um, make sure you prioritize the relationship. Because I feel like it's very stable. It can be a really good thing. But they're also looking for more of that you initiating um you initiating contact, you initiating, you know, telling them how you feel about them, okay? Um, in other parts of the, uh, the, the spread, this is the second spread here, it deals with your spiritual advice and your overall energy. What I have here that kind of perplexes me is we have a really, really good thing that's coming into the picture, but it's creating a lot of stress. And what I feel happening is uh, you or your partner or somebody significant to you that you live with, you share space with, somebody's getting a job offer. And I feel like it is um, kind of like turning, overturning, or it's complicating a situation. Okay, so it, it's making a situation more complicated. It could be um, you have a coworker and now you got promoted and you're overseeing the coworker. So that can be a little bit awkward. OK, uh, your partner might have a job offer and it uh, requires that they travel, for example, and that's going to be difficult because then it's going to lead to a long distance relationship. And then I see for other people, the third scenario that's playing out is uh, there's a new job that you might have signed a contract for. And then you have a new job that's coming in, but you can't take the new job, even though it's something that you wanted because you already signed a contract. And I also feel there is a, uh, a stipulation here with this work situation about conditions. So, for example, if you work for them, you have to sign a contract for a two-year retainer. So you have to work for them for two years. You can't quit before the two years. I also feel like there are conditions imposed upon this um, job where you might be on a probationary period for like a year, for six months. And so you're not really free to explore other options. So I feel I feel there's an element here about um, I shouldn't have accepted that job too soon because something else came into the picture. And you thought you wouldn't get that dream job, but now it's coming in and it, it's complicating things. So... My advice for you here is uh, they're saying to slow down. So for those of you who have spent a lot of, you know, last month applying for work, don't take the first thing that comes into the picture, okay? If you are watching this ahead of time and hopefully it's still relevant for you as you progress through the month of October, don't take the first job. Make sure what else is coming through because you might be on pins and needles waiting for job offers, waiting for callbacks, waiting for interviews, waiting to find out the results for interviews. And you're at a point too where you're like, oh, they're never going to call me back. They're, they don't want me. And then all of a sudden the floodgates open and you get a bunch of communication, people calling you in for second, third interviews, people calling you in and asking you, when can you start? And people calling you in and telling you, you know, you're a really, really top candidate and we really want you on board and so the floodgates gonna open for you and it's going to create you know a lot of new opportunities it will bring a lot of communications when it pertains to as it pertains to work and new job offers and so 
be patient, okay? Don't think about worst case scenarios. Don't project negative energies into something that is still brewing. It's still in the works. So don't talk yourself into things. I'm not good enough. They're not going to call me. Um, I'm not qualified enough. Don't do any of that, okay? Imbue it with positivity. And I feel like this is a card about, you know, once again, holding back a little bit. See what else is on the offing. And make sure you ask a lot of questions so that you are not blindsided but by whatever's coming in. But both of these major arcana cards, it's all about not jumping the gun, being a little bit more methodical, being a little bit more patient, and being a little bit more, you know, contained so that when the right job comes into the picture, it's okay. Like you will know right away, this is my dream job and that it's going to, um, it's exactly what I want. So for example, if you've already accepted a job and then your dream job comes in, I feel honestly, this is not something that you do because you guys have a very strong sense of loyalty and commitment. Um, you don't want to tell the first employer, I'm sorry, um, I accepted it too prematurely and now my dream job came in and I have to, you know, turn you guys down and, and accept this other job. Don't, um, I don't feel like there's anything wrong in doing that. And I feel like if it's your dream job and you can envision yourself being there five, 10 years and to really build a future for yourself, make the necessary steps, whatever you need to do, even if that means turning down a previous employer so that you can get into a new job. I, I feel like that's going to be beneficial for you down the line. And if you explain it from the heart, they will understand. Okay. And then bottom line is if they're giving you a hard time, if they're being petty, if they're being difficult on purpose, and if they're, they're um, not supportive of that, then you don't want to work in that environment anyways, right? So let's be a little bit more rational about, you know, some of these choices that are made available to you. Um, I feel like some of you are experiencing uh, some health issues, okay? Nine of Swords, Sleepless Night, and the Strength card, those are traditional health-related um, cards. So I do see a lot of headaches, aches and pains, as well as, um, you know, the head flu, like throat irritation, stuffiness, um, really strong fatigue, like really, really strong fatigue. It's like you're, you're dr uh, um, drained of energy. So make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure you get your vitamin C. Make sure that, you know, um, I'm seeing people taking medication here, um, possibly for insomnia, depression. Um, emotional swings up and down. You might even need to take care of somebody who is um, undergoing these things. So like I see emotional swings, okay? And I see like um, very severe aches and pains. So you might be dealing with someone who's trying to recalibrate themselves, get their themselves back on track and things like that. So it's a good week overall to take it easy, nurture your relationship. And um, for those who are applying for work, you have some wonderful things that are coming in. So don't fret. Wait for them to gradually come in. Buy yourself some time. Don't rush into the first thing that sounds good. Buy yourself some time to let things kind of organically play out so that you can choose the best option that's available to you. If you need to see a doctor even, um, I would say getting a second, third opinion. I, I feel like it is um, going to be more beneficial for you down the line, okay? It's just so you can have that peace of mind, okay? Um, I wish you the best here, Capricorns. Take care of yourself, all right? And um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.